60 million Nigerian women have undergone FGM worldwide. Globally, around 200 million women and girls have been mutilated. Let us know what your thoughts are. Do you know someone who's been in this situation? Have you been in this situation? And um, are you concerned that this perhaps is still ongoing around you? 0144-89981. The WhatsApp number is 809 981 And you can also tweet at smooth981. Our guest is Oluwatomi Olunuga, and she's from the Hazy Health Initiative. And uh, they are a development organization and focused on improving health and productivity of vulnerable and underserved populations across Africa. And uh, yeah, we're also streaming the show live as well. So you can catch the live stream on YouTube. So just search for Smooth981 on YouTube and you can catch the live stream, even drop a comment on that stream as well. And coming back to this subject, Tommy, I, I want to ask this though. 2003 Child Rights Act, yes. 2015 um, VAP Act. Have there been any prosecutions and possibly convictions that you're aware of none sorry none none so and i mean that that's why uh you know when you asked about uh you know the issues that we are having as regards to the enforcement of this law i emphasize the fact that reporting is one of our major issue no one is ready to talk about the fact that this was the person who you know who conducted this act on me and you know i mean there, there are issues around uh, you know, we stay in the same community. I don't want to put you in trouble. If we go to court, are we still going to be friends after court? So, you know, like community issues such as that. And also the, the fear of uh, being discriminated in the community for talking about something like this. Mm. So like things like this are things that have affected uh, the enforcement of, uh, of the laws. Now, we've spoken about this being a harmful cultural practice. Is there a perhaps uh religious aspect to this hmm, okay so this is actually very dicey because um a lot of religious leaders some religious leaders have their contrary opinion to this but then we know that um, in the bible it's not it's not supported and also um from our engagement with religious leaders from um, the muslim point of view we've also realized that it's also not supported in the Quran that um, female genital mutilation should be conducted. However, we also know that there are also a group of people who would say it is written in their, it's written in the holy books that it should be conducted on females. But then like this is always it's always open for, for opinions for, for different point of views. Yeah. So who exactly carries out these processes in communities okay so yeah so uh this is this is this is actually a very nice question because a lot of us i personally also assume that it was only traditional circumcisers the ololas that conduct this uh this practice but then from our engagement on stop watch projects because we ran this for three years in osho apt and Oyo state so you know we had a lot of engagements with community members and we realized that it's not only the traditional circumcisers we also have traditional birth attendants they they call them ag babies in the southwest we also have doctors nurses you know health workers who conduct yeah. this practice and you know when when you conduct female genital mutilation in your hospital setting it's called medicalization of female genital mutilation and that is why when we are working we were trying to you know tell people to stop this practice we also educate you know the health workers that this is not acceptable this is not part of what you know is expected of you to carry out on on girl childs on on females and i mean so far so good we've actually had support from you know uh, the medical association the nurses nurses association you know everyone is taking an active part to educate health workers community health workers doctors nurses to ensure that even medicalization of female genital mutilation is not allowed in in the state and i think another issue also you know in terms of medicalization of fgm is that in 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 some of our laws it's not clearly stated it's not clearly written that okay if you do this in the hospital mm. you know this and this is what's going to happen so even the laws we have still need certain amendments like there are still gaps in the laws that we have like take for instance i think the fine for for committing female genital mutilation is about two hundred thousand. i mean mm. anyone can actually so like you can literally just pay you know if you're not if you're not charged if you're not told to 
to go into prison for two years, you can actually bail yourself out to 200,000 Naira. In some states, it's about 100,000 Naira. I think before uh, the VAPAX was domesticated in Austrian states, uh, Austrian state had uh, a law of, a FGM law of 2004. And that largely states that you pay 50,000 Naira. So imagine if they didn't domesticate the VAP Act as at 2021. If you commit female genital mutilation, you just pay 50,000 Naira. So, like, wow. we still have certain gaps even in the laws we have, mm -hmm. <laughs> even before we start talking about uh, the enforcement of these laws. In some way, can FB, FGM be viewed as a disability, a mm -hmm. sexual disability? I, I personally wouldn't want to I wouldn't want to use that term mm -hmm. yes that, because I believe that uh, you know there's some survivors who necessarily don't go through that you know and I, I wouldn't want to describe it that way yes mm -hmm. and also you know to further promote the rights of our women and girls you know we have to be careful with some terminologies that you know we use right yes. so what is the overall rationale for people subjecting their children or l young ladies in the community yeah. to this yeah like since we've been talking like we can see that um female genital mutilation it's embedded in culture it's a it's a communal thing so there's a lot of cultural beliefs that people hold on to that strengthens uh the occurrence of this practice so you know you get to hear people say uh it prevents promiscuity it prevents a child from being promiscuous or you know you get to stay in your marriage if you're mutilated things around it is for it is hygienic you know you hear some women telling you that she keeps scratching her private parts it's infection we need to mutilate that so you know like it's like various uh different myths different beliefs that people hold on to mm. people also some also say because um it increases uh, sexual pleasure for men you know if they mutilate if they mutilate um the, the female so like different cultural reasons and also you know some people will tell you it's what we do in our community so they don't really have a reason like okay this is why we do it they just tell you it's just what we do it's a mm. community thing we just do this in our community so we also have to do it just to uh promote your prestige within the community wow well i uh, was talking about female genital mutilation and uh you can let us know what your thoughts pastor dakbo says this is the first time i'm hearing of this well um, I'm sure there are also a few people out there that probably are unaware of this thing that's happening and has happened for so long, yeah. not just in Nigeria, but across the world as well. The WhatsApp number is 0809 And you can also tweet at smooth981. The telephone number to call 0144-89981. Good morning. Hi, Abbas. Good morning. Very well, thank you. Go ahead, please. Well, well clinical measure is to at least check people from being it. But basically, most people that are engaged in female gender mutilation do it for cultural reasons, and some claim that it is just to reduce the sexual libido of uh, women, which I feel it is not all uh, right. So are they saying that uh, for us to reduce the sexual libido of men, they have to cast treatment too. So I think it's just about uh, more of organization and awareness. Government needs to engage more uh, on that so that people can actually be aware of it that no if this is not right you are doing a lot of damage to your children when you engage in such and stuff and like she like you said too like i said earlier there must be serious measures punitive measures that will make people know that if you truly if you engage just like uh in the days that they said people were killing twins and what the government did to check that and i think it's it's even right for us because in some states uh, you see uh, no, you we have some states where children are still being killed because they they said they are they, they are bandits they are they engaged in witchcraft and stuff. So I think we need more of orientation. Our national orientation industry should do more in educating people before we start thinking about the creative measures. And kudos, like I've always said to you people, you're always bringing topics that 
will give a lot of awareness because I like somebody uh, mentioned in his uh, WhatsApp message that he doesn't even he has not even heard of it before. So programs like this encourage people to listen more to the radio, keep it up really and good job from uh Thank you. Well, thank you so much for that, Abbas. And thank you, as always, for sharing your thoughts. The number is 01-448-9981. That's the telephone number to call. The WhatsApp number 809 And you can also tweet at smooth981. Uh, Tommy, I want to ask, is there a link between um, female genital mutilation and um, indices like poverty and illiteracy? Okay. Oh, okay. Yes. So, um, mm, as regards uh, that link, I think one thing that one thing that we've not been able to establish it's it's you know links such as that like direct link. You know, I cannot really say you know FGM contributes to poverty or you know issues like that. But one thing that we've seen from our data is that um, quite a number of people who are illiterate, you know, conduct female genital mutilation. And in previous data also, we tend to see that people who are probably low income earners, you know, they perform female genital mutilation. But then recent statistics, you know, now we've been seeing that a lot of women who have actually been mutilated or have daughters that have been mutilated, they're mm. probably between, they're probably middle income earners or mm. high income earners. So wow. even like even the recent MICS study of 2021, uh, we can see that a lot of people living in the urban area have been mutilated. And also a lot of people, like more people living in the urban area compared to those in the rural area have daughters that have been mutilated. So it's like probably as at 2008, you know, we would say it's probably the illiterate, the people who don't have money that are conducting this practice. But now the statistics is telling us something different about people who have been mutilated and also people who have daughters that have been mutilated. All right, we'll take a quick break. And when we return, we'll continue the conversation and wrap up as well. Today is the zero day of tolerance for female genital mutilation all across the world. Now, this day was um, put in place from two, in 2012 by the UN in a bid to bring awareness to the cause and of course try to eradicate as well it's lagos talks on smooth 98.1 future forward banking love music love life what does future forward banking mean to you speed innovation convenience lifestyle goals or just simply getting service that is designed just for you yeah, we thought you might like all of that and more. That is why we specially created Providence Bank for you to take care of your daily experiences. At Providence Bank, we believe that banking should be all about you and your business and how to get you to the next level. If you do not already have a Providence Bank account, please speak with our business concierge on 0700 77 684 387 or email businessconcierge at providencebank.com to switch to a future forward banking experience. Providence Bank. Future forward banking. It's the breakfast group on your radio. Breakfast 
Smooth 98.1, love music, love life. This is Lagos Talks and we're talking about female genital mutilation, how it affects women and populations as well. Let us know if you have a question or your thoughts. The WhatsApp number is 0809 0440981. You can also tweet at Smooth981 and we're speaking with our guest from Haiti Health Initiative, Oluwa Tomi Olunuga. And uh, let us know. You can, of course, also tweet at Smooth981. Don't forget the hashtag is Lagos Talks 981. Lagos Talks 981. That is the hashtag to use on our Twitter. Uh, Tommy, I, I want to ask this question that I find very interesting. I know you did touch on it a little bit when you said with existing laws regarding how uh, medical procedures are carrying out the area of FGM is not really addressed. It's kind of gray in some way. Um, what would it take to get health workers to be on the side of the people or the survivors rather? Let's call them survivors. Okay, so like what would it take to get the health workers mm -hmm. to be on the side of the survivors? Uh, so that you that can you provide more clarity? okay so yeah. what would it say to get health workers um who would otherwise engage in this practice particularly in rural communities mm -hmm. where it's prevalent to be on the side of people without uh, regulation which is not available yet okay um yes like and just like i think abbas mentioned when he called you may say something about more sensitization so i really think that we need to have more conversations with community health workers with I mean, and I, I'm really emphasizing on community health workers because, like, we know that some of this, um, some of this mutilation actually happen, you know, at the rural level. But we should not ignore just, we should not just focus on just community health workers alone, but the general health health worker body, you know, as a whole, both a doctor and a nurse, and let them know about the the consequence of this practice because some of them, it's not, it's not really like they are not aware that this is wrong. But it's probably just due to their 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 own personal belief. Like they personally just believe that okay, this should happen. Like okay, it's fine. Like I can ensure that she doesn't have some of these consequences. Like I can reduce the bleeding. I can reduce the pain. You mm. know, those short term effects. I could do that. So it, it's like okay, if I can do that, so why not? Why not just mutilate? So you can see it literally beyond the. It's literally beyond just the knowledge alone, but also you know changing their attitude towards this practice so also if we can have you know stories from survivors like people who have experienced this thing so if you're telling me you can manage the short-term complications what about the long-term complications of this of this um of this practice so if we can have more survivors coming out there to tell us you know what what the experiences are like such that you know even out workers can change their attitude towards this and i'm not saying that all out workers practice or probably perpetrate female genital mutilation. It's just we have some of them who practice female genital mutilation. Okay, uh, let's go on to WhatsApp. This one says, I'm Gilbert Musa from Festac. On FGM, the practice, as stated, is cultural among other factors. Family members plan with medical practitioners in some cases to carry out this act. Solution, continuous massive awareness campaigns from the community to national levels on the harmful effects of this global practice. And another message from Charles in Lecky. FGM basically is a tradition in communities. The best way to stop the practice is by engaging the chiefs and village heads in serious seminars because they are the main enforcers of this practice and we all know how very well respected they are within the community it is a very bad practice now on the international scene though um are there any frameworks or strategies that have been established to help address this cause yeah I, i'm i'm aware of the of the cdor uh this is this is a framework that i mean i believe like almost all countries actually subscribe to and um, it clearly states that you know we should actually promote the right of women and girls and identify the fact that female genital mutilation is a violation of human rights human rights you know to be free from torture or any in inhuman practice to be free from you know to actually assess health care so if the CEDAW actually recognize that the more we um, conduct human genital mutilation the more we violate you know females um, human rights so I think it's it's like every other person really should agree with that yeah 
All right. Well, I have to say special thank you to you for joining us on the show this morning. Do you have any last sign off, you know, a message that you want to share? You've spoken a lot about it, but what's that call to action like? We have to do this. Oh, OK. Uh, <laughs> I think my, my final call to action is uh, for us to head female genital mutilation. It's everyone's responsibility, irrespective of your position or the organization we all have a role to play you can tweet about it you can talk about it you can educate someone about it and the tricky thing is some people don't even know they're mutilated and they're actually mutilated and mm. you know you don't even know so you know but when we keep when we start talking about things like this even survivors who are not aware you know they can actually seek help you know in terms of certain complications so and if major in terms is everyone's responsibility but policy maker but individuals but you know organizations even media everyone really has a role to play thank you very much all right well thank you very much Olua Tommy Olunuga from the Hasey Health Initiative do stay with us there's a lot more to come on Smooth Breakfast <laughs>